Single molecule real-time sequencing, or just smart sequencing, is one of the many modern sequencing techniques that has revolutionized biological sciences. Smart sequencing allows us to generate long sequencing reads with high accuracy and in real time so that we can observe DNA synthesis by a polymerase as it's happening. This allows us to sequence whole genomes more efficiently. Unlike pyrosequencing and ion torrent, which were covered in other videos, smart sequencing doesn't require us to amplify the amount of DNA, so PCR isn't necessary. And this is a good thing to consider because PCR can sometimes make mistakes. As with any other DNA sequencing technology, before we can begin, we need to prepare the library for sequencing. So hairpin adapters, or these strands of DNA shaped like a hairpin, are added to both ends of the double-stranded DNA molecule that we want to sequence, which effectively enables the DNA to become a single-stranded circular template so that the DNA can be sequenced continuously. Once the adapters are ligated, we need to add the primer, which binds to its own binding site previously engineered in the single-stranded region of the hairpin adapter that we just attached. We need these primers to create a location where the polymerase can bind to begin synthesis. Next, we add the polymerase that attaches to the annealed primer sequence. Then the sample is ready to load onto a smart cell. The DNA library and polymerase are loaded onto a smart cell, which contains zero-mode waveguides, or ZMWs. A ZMW is a chamber, just like this one, and these chambers are holes that are approximately 70 nanometers in diameter and approximately 100 nanometers in depth in a super thin metal film, and that's pretty freaking tiny. At the bottom of each of these chambers is a clear glass substrate. Now, each smart cell contains tens of thousands to millions of these ZMWs, and within each ZMW is where the actual sequencing reaction occurs. A single DNA polymerase attached to a single DNA template is anchored to the bottom glass surface of a ZMW. It's immobilized at the bottom through surface coatings that direct protein attachment to the glass floor. Once the smart cell is loaded with DNA and polymerase, we add the nucleotides. Smart sequencing uses fluorescent nucleotides. These are fluorophores that are attached to the phosphate chain of the nucleotide. All four nucleotides are added to the well at once because each of the four nucleotides is labeled with a different colored fluorophore. For example, adenine is green, cytosine is blue, thymine is yellow, and guanine is red. So we can tell them apart and this allows the detector to identify which base is being incorporated. The DNA polymerase starts adding new nucleotides to synthesize a DNA strand complementary to the template DNA that we have so it'll only add the nucleotide that's complementary to the next unpaired base. Now, how do these zero-mode waveguides work exactly? Remember, ZMWs are cylindrical holes just tens of nanometers in diameter, and they're illuminated through the glass bottom by a laser light. Interestingly, the wavelength of this light is too large to actually pass through the opening of the ZMW. What happens is, the light from the beam at the bottom penetrates through the lower 20 to 30 nanometers of the chamber, creating a detection volume of 20 zeptoliters, that's 10 to the negative 21 liters. What this means is that the camera below the ZMW can't really see past the 30 nanometer mark, which is what we want. This is our detection zone. Why is this important? Well, as a natural step in DNA synthesis, the phosphate chain is cleaved when the nucleotide is incorporated into the DNA strand. Well, cleaving this phosphate also means releasing the attached fluorophore too so that it floats away and diffuses out of the observation zone past the 30 nanometer mark of the ZMW where the fluorescence is no longer observable by camera. And because each polymerase is attached permanently at the bottom of the chamber, it is always within this detection volume. At this volume, the activity of a single molecule can be detected amongst the thousands of other fluorescent nucleotides floating in and out of the detection zone constantly. This means that as the polymerase elongates, the nucleotide being recruited, in this case adenine, is held by the polymerase for fractions of a second, whereas the free-floating nucleotides not being used are free to diffuse in and out of the detection volume. When a base is held in the detection volume for a longer period of time, a light pulse is produced until the fluorophore is cleaved off and floats away. The camera detects this incorporated nucleotide in real time because it emits a more intense fluorescent signal and the other unattached nucleotides are floating in and out of the detection zone so fast that the camera doesn't see them the same way. 
and because the color from each base is different, this allows for the specific base to be identified. We can see that the base added after adenine was red, which means that it was guanine, then blue, which means it was cytosine, then yellow means thymine. These signals are converted to long sequences called continuous long reads. In this way, each CMW provides a window that enables the real-time observation of DNA polymerase as it synthesizes DNA with the ability to detect nucleotide incorporation against background noise. For a short insert library, the circular structure of the DNA after we added the adapters results in the insert sequence being covered multiple times. The polymerase synthesized one strand, then the adapter, then the next strand, then the other adapter, and around again. Each pass of an original strand is termed a subread. In addition, all subreads from the same molecule can be combined into one highly accurate consensus sequence termed a circular consensus sequence. So that concludes this video on single molecule real-time sequencing. Hope this helped and thanks for watching.